Extreme weather has been in the news a lot lately. Storm hitting the Bahamas, heading for the... Uh, the Alaska fire we just checked is more than 250 acres wide. The Provo fire chief in says... these record temperatures, Britain is feeling the burn. So what might these separate events have in common? Climate change. It's climate. Climate change. Climate change. The fight against climate change is getting... Climate change. For a long time, climate scientists tiptoed around the issue. Are individual extreme weather events caused by climate change? Increasingly, the answer climate experts are giving is yes. The latest iteration of that is a new massive report by a UN-led organization set up to assess the science of climate change. It was pretty emphatic in its messaging, actually. In case you missed it, this is what it said. It is unequivocal that human influence has warmed the atmosphere, ocean, and land and it linked that human-driven warming to extreme weather we've all experienced lately. That connection is made possible by a relatively new field called attribution science. It aims to apply rigor to finding answers to questions we've all asked ourselves. Does that drought, fire, or storm we just lived through have anything to do with climate change or human activity? And if so, how much? The science has its limitations, but as it improves, the answers could impact where people live and how cities plan for the future. Here's how it works. Field scientists study the environment, the oceans, glaciers, forests, and atmosphere, and track any changes. That's the what's happening. Where attribution science comes in is in the why. Did that glacier melt because of climate change or the planet's natural climate cycles? Attribution science aims to check off the list of possible explanations using complex computer models and lots of data. Let's take a look at attribution science in action. Around 2013, a blob appeared off the coast of Alaska. It wasn't a physical object, but rather an area of warm water. It grew and grew and grew, reaching as far south as Mexico, which is where I'm from. It caused major economic and ecological damage. Some oceanographers ruled out El Nino, which is a warm weather pattern, as a possible cause for the blob growth. And a 2018 attribution science paper suggested that human-driven climate change played a big role in feeding the blob. I wanted to better understand how attribution scientists come to their conclusions, the limitations of their work, and how it all affects us. I set up a virtual meeting with Stephanie Herring, a climate scientist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA for short. How is it that scientists can connect individual weather events like heat waves or the blob to climate, which takes place over decades? It is very complicated, but there's actually a bunch of ways we do this. I like to use a public health analogy. If you were to smoke, it would increase your risk of lung cancer. Public health officials have a way to look at a group of people that don't smoke and look at a group of people that do smoke and then understand what their change in risk was, how much their risk of lung cancer increased because of smoking. People who don't smoke also get lung cancer, right? And so in climate change, in, in the climate change research world, we actually do something very similar. The smoker in that analogy is our current planet. And the non-smoker, well, that's an imaginary Earth in which humans aren't pumping out greenhouse gases like methane and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Attribution scientists can use climate models to look back and forward in time. Then they can model out the risk of an extreme weather event happening under those imaginary conditions and what's actually happened. In many cases, researchers find the connection to climate change is pretty clear. In others, it's more tenuous. One key variable is data, and all these analyses require lots and lots of it. The more data that's available, the more conclusive these assessments can be. That's why climate scientists are most certain about the connection between climate change and heat waves. The heat-related data goes back millions of years thanks to specimens like ice cores, tree rings, and corals that can give scientists proxy readings on temperature and atmospheric conditions. More recently, satellites have provided even more data. The other piece is, do we understand the physical dynamics behind what drives these types of events. Two limitations of attribution science, a lack of data in certain regions of the Earth, and how well scientists understand a particular weather event and its drivers. Take tornadoes, for example. Meteorologists don't fully understand the physics of how they form, and by extension, how climate change might affect the environmental conditions that trigger them. As a result, Dr. Herring says no one has the tools to do an attribution study on tornadoes because the science isn't far enough along. Other events like hurricanes fall somewhere in the middle between heat and tornadoes. Still, atmospheric scientists don't know how climate change will impact the severity and frequency of storms in the future. How much of it is human activity 
versus something else. Extreme events have always been around. What we're seeing is that while natural variability continues to play a role in setting, kind of setting things up for an extreme event to happen, what we are seeing is that climate change is increasingly playing a role in, in pushing things past, up, up, you know, past a different, a new threshold. What should people take away from that? Like, why should they? Why should they care? While I'm sort of sitting here talking about global average temperature and two degrees Celsius and you know melting sea ice. Um, that's going to impact zoning codes in towns across this country. That's going to impact where people choose to live, um, what kind of homes they build, uh, what kind of transportation infrastructure we create. And it will help us understand how to plan for and prepare for our, our future and ensure that we are able to adapt and be resilient in the face of change. When I look around Miami Beach, which is where I live, I'm already seeing that climate adaptation at work. The city raised the streets because of sea level rise and flooding. Other communities are grappling with fires and drought. If your city is also trying to become more climate resilient, let us know in the comments. Or if you have questions about science or health in general, let us know there too. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. Hasta luego, see you soon. Gracias.